All right. Um, hello and welcome to Bioconductor 2021. This is a package demo session on deconvolution and prediction of mutational signatures. We'll start uh, the talk shortly, but first a few housekeeping items. If you have questions for the speaker, please enter them into the Q&A tab. Please clarify um, uh, what your question is about in case we lose the context. And you'll also have the ability to upvote questions for the speaker to answer. Um, if you would like to ask your question live, please use your raise hand feature and the moderator will bring you to the stage. There are a variety of emotion, emoticons available to give feedback to the speaker as well. And if for some reason you have to leave early, a video of this session will be available a couple of hours after the session has been completed. We're gonna do our best to answer questions throughout, um, except for during a portion of this uh, where there's videos playing. Um, but without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Aaron Chevalier from Boston University. He'll be demoing the Mutational Signature Comprehensive Analysis Toolkit package that enables users to deconvolute and predict mutational signatures. Take it away, Aaron. Thank you so much, Glenn. Uh, thank you for introducing me. Um, so I'm going to do a, um, a pretty brief uh, just background on mutational signatures for those who aren't uh, particularly familiar and some uh, information on the, the package. And then we'll show some some videos of some hands-on tutorials. I wasn't brave enough to do those, uh, <laughs> those hands-on um, coding live. Um, just bring up the, the slides now. Um, and feel free to ask questions um, anytime during the presentation. Uh, it's, it's possible that I'll have the answer on the next slide, but um, if there's anything that you're confused about, uh, please let me know immediately. Ask any any specific questions. Then. Looks like Aaron is reconnecting, but I think he's. I don't know. Looks like you're back, Aaron. Yep. Okay. Uh, just pull that back up. Okay. Um, so, a quick background on mutational signatures, um, features of Musica TK. I'm going to show a uh, real data set analysis. Um, and then there's two tutorial videos one that shows um, uh, some, some basic setup for loading and processing samples and then um, prediction from existing signatures and then another uh, shorter demo that shows uh, discovery and analysis of novel signatures so um, just briefly what are mutational signatures so um, a lot of people do um, work looking at um, different mutations in the genome and their effects on on cells we're looking at the the opposite we're looking at where these mutations come from so if you go outside in the sun and get burned ultraviolet rays or if you smoke cigarettes or just endogenous processes such as aging um, add mutations to the genome so cigarette smoke for example contains this chemical benzoapyrene that binds to dna and creates these c to a transversions so it's not randomly mutating dna it's causing a specific kind of mutation and uh, just some some notation um, uh, so looking at the possible base pair changes, you know, A to C, A to G, A, A, to, A to G, A to T, C to A, C to G, C to T, et cetera, um, we, can rep we can represent these in different ways. Uh, for some historical reasons, we use the pyrimidines. Um, so we end up with six uh, possible ways that you could mutate a DNA base pair. So that's where, that's where this, this comes from in, our, uh, in our, our main kind of schema that we look at. We also look at the base pairs adjacent to the, the mutation. So uh, the base pair upstream and downstream, which have um, in each of them four different base pairs that could occur. So we multiply these together and we have a total of 96 possible um, mutations that could occur looking at that central mutation and the two mutations around it. And so um, now, uh, to represent um, mutations from a source such as cigarette smoke, 
we can actually um, represent this as a probability distribution across those different types of mutations. And so we see there's those C to A mutations in blue that we talked about, but it's a different probability of the mutation depending on the context. And um, empirically, we can discover these for um, UV radiation, for aging, um, and for many other uh, sources of mutation as well. So this is what we're talking about. We talk about mutational signatures. It's these signatures of mutation in DNA from sources, um, either inside the cell or um, from chemical exposure, et cetera, that cause mutation. So I'll, I'll briefly go over some of the, the features of Musica TK package. Um, so we can load data from multiple formats, um, VCF files and math files, which are um, pretty standard for representing mutations, and generically from, uh, from a matrix or data table. And from there, we can um, import those, uh, those mutations. We can count them up into those single base substitutions. So, that, so that's the table that, that I showed you before. Uh, but there's other mutations that mutation types that can occur. So double base substitutions, that's uh, two bases next to each other mutating at the same time, or small insertions and deletions, uh, base pairs being added or removed from the genome. And from here, we perform the convolution, where we take these uh, mutational tables and we separate them out into those, um, those signatures. So that, that's what we looked at before. And we also find exposures, which are for each sample, we find the proportion of those exposures that that sample has been exposed to. So if you had a lung sample, you could break that down into say 40% of mutations caused by cigarette smoke, 60% caused by aging, for example. We can also uh, predict exposures from existing signatures. So instead of finding signatures and exposures at the same time, we can find, um, we can take existing signatures such as Cosmic, if you're familiar with that source, that has put a lot of work into uh, building a really good set of signatures. We can take those signatures and find the exposures in our samples to those signatures as well. So beyond uh, finding those exposures to those signatures in our samples, um, it's really important for analysis to actually be able to, to visualize these exposures. So we've provided a, um, a very customizable um, and easy to use set of visualizations for these. So for instance, we can sort samples by um, which have the most, uh, most mutations. We can sort by um, uh, proportional exposure and sort by a specific signature. We can split these up by tumor type and compare them. And we can split them up by signature and see, for instance, which um, tumor type has a very high exposure to a given signature. And we also have some, um, some actual analysis built into the package as well. Um, so we have um, UMAP, which is um, uh, a technique for um, uh, low-level representation of those exposures in the different samples. Um, so uniform. Um, uh, uniform mapping and, um, and approximation projection. So the, the cool thing about this is compared to TISNI and some other methods um, that do this kind of 2D embedding, um, each of these samples, um, the uh, proximity to samples near it and samples far away is all meaningful. So if two samples are close together, that means they have a similar exposure profile. And the further that two samples are away from each other, two dots on this, on this grid, the, the more different their exposure are. And we can see um, our upper left UMAP, we've colored by mutation types. And we can see that there's a, a separation between mutational types um, that the samples actually separate uh, based on exposure. We can see that um, directly coloring by exposure uh, directly, so we can see um, what signatures are high and what tumor types and what regions of the UMAP. Um, we can build heat maps as well um, and see the association between our signatures and our samples. Um, we can compare samples or compare signatures. So if we have some 
uh, novel signatures that we've discovered. We can compare those to well-characterized signatures, such as cosmic. We can cluster our samples as well, uh, based on their exposures. And we can perform a differential analysis to see um, analytically rather than visually what uh, associations there are between um, signatures and samples or signatures and tumor types. So now I'm going to show a, an analysis of a real data set. So this is the, the TCJ data set. And um, the, the steps of this are downloading um, these TCJ variants via TCJ BioLinks. We import those samples into Musica TK. We build mutational tables based on um, the SBS96 uh, schema, which is what I showed at the beginning, and the double base substitution and indel schemas as well. We predict those sample exposures to cosmic signatures using latent Dirichlet allocation, LDA, and we embed those samples in two dimensions using UMAP, and we color samples by tumor type or signature exposure. So here we have um, all the TCGA samples. We have their mutations. Each point is one sample. And they're colored by, on the left, their tumor types, and on the right by uh, four signatures that we've chosen. So we see first, looking on the left, we have a um, large number of samples, large number of tumor types, but they split off um, pretty well. There's um, a number of um, tumor types that kind of form their own clusters. Um, so we have a, a question from Michael Love. Here, let me uh, read that. Michael Love is asking, can you describe the differential analysis briefly? For example, what types of tests are being run across signatures and tumor types? OK. So um, I'll just uh, move back to the slide that shows what he's talking about so everyone's uh, everyone can see. So on the bottom right, we have this differential analysis. What we're showing here is a, um, a general linear model um, I believe we have um, a couple other um, a couple other statistical tests built in. Um, I'm sorry, I can't I can't remember what all of those are. Uh, but if you um, if you ping me offline, or if you uh, I can I can let you know actually at the end of the talk, I can find that that information for you. Uh, going back to our um, single base substitution UMAP. Um, we can see that we have these, these four different signatures that we have selected. And um, one very interesting one is this SBS2, which is active in this, um, this kind of combined cluster that covers cervical and bladder and head and neck squamous. And this is um, a signature of Apobec. Um, so that, that's interesting that these, these uh, samples cluster together. Um, we have SBS6 which also is, um, is seen in a, a number of different tumor types. This is a signature of mismatch repair. SBS10A is this small cluster um, with several samples from multiple different tumor types. This is, this is pretty cool. This is um, a poly signature. And SBS44, uh, which splits off some uterine samples from the rest, is um, also a mismatch repair signature. And looking at our double base signatures, uh, double base substitution signatures as well. So we see we have uh, fewer samples. This is a, a more rare mutation type, um, which is also why it's, it's a little bit less differentiated. Uh, but we see we do have some, um, some clusters that, that have broken off. So this um, DBS1 um, high signature, this is a, an ultraviolet um, radiation signature, which makes sense. We have SKCM, which is a skin cancer melanoma. Uh, DBS2 is an apobac signature as well. Um, and DBS7 and 10 are both different mismatch repair signatures. And then finally, we have 
uh, the small insertion and deletion UMAP. So here, this is, um, again, less well differentiated. Um, but we do have some interesting features. So um, this, um, uh, on the bottom right, there's this kind of uh, C-shape cluster uh, that's high in signature two and signature seven. Um, so signature two is a um, slippage during replication signature. And uh, ID seven is a mismatch repair signature. Uh, we have this ID six, which is present in kind of the the um, north or top samples. Um, so ID6 is a uh, homologous recombination um, repair signature. And um, ID10, which um, is very active in a, in a number of signatures, is actually unknown. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting. So now I'll um, turn this over to Shruti to um, play two tutorial videos for you. First one showing um, some uh, processing of samples and prediction, and then one other showing discovery of novel signatures. Um, this is a tutorial for the Musica TK package, which is available on GitHub and Bioconductor. And this is a tutorial for predicting exposures from existing signatures. So we have this RENV package that keeps track of uh, the exact versions of packages that are installed that are used for this analysis. So if you install RENV, library it, and restore based on the, the lock file provided, you'll get the exact same output. Um, you can also install the exact version of Musica TK that's being used um, based on the GitHub release. So when that's done, you can library the packages. So Musica TK, of course. Um, TCGA Biolinks is a package for downloading TCGA data. We'll start that running now. And with R is a package for uh, creating reproducible results with a seed. So we'll be using four data sets. These are the four smallest data sets in TCJ: um, Coal, DLBC, UCS, and Kick. So what we're doing here, we're downloading the data. Here, we'll make this a little bit larger. We're downloading data from GDC using the TCGA BioLinks package. And we're also keeping track of what the, the name is um, for, the, for each data set. So we're downloading the data. We're using this um, extract variance from matrix for music at TK. And we're just R binding them together. Um, and we're just repeating each type. So the type is just the name repeating each type for the length of, um, of the variance. So now we have a sample name attached to a tumor type. And this will be useful in a little bit. So now that we've got our data set downloaded and put together, um, the only other thing we need to create a music object is a genome representation. We have a um, a helper utility for this um, called select genome. And because this TCGA data from GDC was prepared with HG38, we'll just input 38. And we get our genome representation. This is similar to a, a FASTA file. And then we just input these into create musica to create what we're calling our TCGA object. And this just does some, some basic checking and standardization to make sure those genomes match, to make sure that everything is in a consistent style. And we're now going to match together. So we had those, um, the, the sample names in our data set and the annotations that were just the, the tumor types. So we're just matching those to make sure they're in the, the right order. And then using this sampanote function on TCGA, 
giving it the name tumor types and just giving it those annotations. From here, we can build our mutational table. This is what's actually used for the, the analysis. This is just counting up the mutations into um, one particular schema. So we're taking single base substitutions, uh, which are also sometimes called single nucleotide variants. We're taking those and we're counting them up into the schema called SBS96. This is the, the standard, um, standard notation, the most common notation for mutational signatures. This is looking at the six possible central, mot uh, central mutations with uh, one base pair on, on either side. So once we build that, we can um, do our prediction. We're going to do one other thing first, which is a subset musica by counts. So we specify um, our objects and the table name and the number of counts. And what this does is this subsets, this creates a new object called a TCJ subset um, that itself is a Musica object. Um, but now for this particular table, SBS 96, all of the samples have at least five counts. So we've, we've pruned away the samples with very low counts because those are likely to produce erroneous results. It's an optional step, but it can improve the, the signal. And so now we, we do the prediction. So we're using this auto predict grid. And what this does is it runs the, the prediction. So it takes uh, signatures, in this case, uh, from Cosmic. We're using the latest, the version three, we're using SBS, as we can see here. And this is um, whole exome data, data, so we're using the exome version. So it uses the signatures that have previously been characterized in Cosmic and predicting, so finding the exposure to these signatures in our particular data set, which is this, this subset. And it has this auto predict grid so it does the prediction individually in each tumor type and then combines them because they're likely to be different. It also uses a heuristic uh, two-stage prediction to find active signatures. Um, so this, this uh, Cosmic version three has a large number of signatures. Um, and if we look at all of them instead of only the active ones, our analysis is going to, to be more complicated. So we can actually plot what our exposures are. And that's what we see right here. This is sorted by number of counts. So we can see we've got one sample here with about 5,000 counts. So a highly mutated sample. And then the rest of these are much lower. So one thing we could do we could set num samples to just say the top 15, so we can see what that looks like. So here we see that highly mutated sample. Uh, it has a lot of this SBS 46, but what we will often want to do is look at proportional counts. So instead of seeing the the raw counts, we're seeing the proportional counts. As you can see, the axis is now scaled to one. And so we can start to see some patterns, um, but in order to see that more clearly, let's actually sort these samples. Let's sort by that signature SBS 46. Now our samples are sorted based on those counts. So we can see clearly there's only a subset samples that have these counts. Uh, we can actually sort by multiple signatures. Let's add SBS9. Take a look at that. So we can see here's SBS9. Let's add one more, uh, say that orange SBS13. 
So we can see we're now starting to see some patterns emerging in our samples. But what would be really cool is if we could relate these patterns in the exposures to specific tumor types. And we can do that by grouping by annotation and then setting the annotation that we're using to tumor types, which is our, our annotation name for tumor types. And we can see we actually have some correspondence between these signatures and our tumor types. So that SBS46 seems to be mostly or entirely present in KIC and SBS13 seems to be present in UCS, and SBS9 seems to be present in DLBC. So we've now correlated certain patterns in our exposures to specific tumor types using this tool. So another visualization we can perform, uh, we can create a UMAP, so we'll um, create a UMAP. We're using this with seed so that we get uh, the same results every time. And we're using create UMAP. And this actually puts a UMAP result into our um, TCGA result object. And from there, we can just plot it. So we just give the result. We're going to use proportional equals true, similar to above. We're going to color by annotation, that annotation being tumor types, which we can see here. And the rest of these parameters are just to make the plotting look nicer. Add some um, annotation labels and text box around them, text size, take out the legend, take out the axes, because we don't need those. So we can see we now have a 2D representation of the exposures and now colored by the tumor types. So we can see we have kick on the left, and it's closest to UCS, and then further away from coal, and furthest from DLBC. And the other thing we can do, we can plot the UMAP, the RTCJ object, this time uh, by the default, which is by, by signatures. So we're seeing the same UMAP now colored by the signature exposure. So we see here in this, this panel, SBS 19, and we have these green samples that are exposed. So SBS 19 is found in DLBC. It's easy to connect these, these things. SBS 25 also found in DLBC. Uh, on the other hand, SBS 32, SBS 46 is found on this left cluster. You can scroll up and see that's kick. And then there's there's other signatures such as SBS5 that's found across the board. So these are a few of the techniques that we can use for uh, exploring and predicting exposures from existing signatures. Thank you for watching and take a look at our tutorial for discovering novel signatures as well. This is a tutorial for Musica TK for discovering novel signatures. Check out the tutorial on predicting exposures from existing signatures for the setup for this data set. Right now, instead of predicting exposures from existing signatures, we'll be discovering de novo signatures using this discover signatures method. So we take the same TCGA subset and the same SBS 96 table. And this time we need to set the number of signatures. We'll set to 10, which is a little bit lower than the number of active signatures that we predicted before. And this is defaulting to LDA as the algorithm. And now we can plot our results. 
so we can see our signatures below. Obviously, there's a lot going on here, but it's promising that the signatures don't all look the same. They're not all flat. They have different peaks in different places. This tells us that we're probably not overfitting too badly by discovering too many signatures. And to actually verify some of these, we have a tool for comparing signatures to existing signatures. Specifically, we have one for comparing to Cosmic V2 and V3. We'll use V2 now because there's fewer signatures to compare to. We'll get cleaner results. And we can see that three of our 10 have jumped out as having especially high correlation to existing signatures. Uh, our signature 9 and signature 7 and signature 5 correspond to cosmic signatures uh, 10, 1, and 6, uh, which relate to error-prone polymerase pole E, spontaneous deamination of 5-methylcytosine, and defective DNA mismatch repair. And we can see these in a data frame as well. So we have our signature on the left and the cosmic signature on the right. And we can see the exact cosine correlation between these things. So the top hit is very, very high correlation. So now that we've done a little bit of work with our signatures, we can take a look at our exposures. And similar to in the prediction tutorial, we're setting proportional equal to true to scale everything onto the same y-axis. We're sorting signatures, uh, sorting samples by a signature. Well, we're starting with signature eight and we're grouping by an annotation and the annotation we're using is tumor types. And we can see the signature eight is flat across the board for kick and UCS, but for DLBC and coal, we have a few samples that have especially high exposure. We'll choose another signature here, we'll choose signature two. And we see something similar, except this time kick is mostly flat and UCS, DLBC, and coal have some samples with especially high exposure. UCS in particular looks like it has a sample with a very high exposure. So we can dig through plot by different signatures and see different kinds of results. Another way to visualize our results and to relate exposures to tumor types is we can create a heat map. So we input our, our object. Again, we're setting proportional equal to true and we're adding on the tumor type annotation, which is this colored bar at the top. And from here we can see different signatures and what samples are either high or low in those signatures. And the top bar corresponds to different tumor types. So we can see kick, which is this pink here, seems like it's related to signature seven. And coal, which is this brown seems like it might be related to signature 10. One way that we can view this analytically rather than visually is by performing a differential analysis. So we're using a linear model for this and comparing with different tumor types. And we can plot that analysis, which we're doing below. And we can actually see kick corresponds to signature seven. So signature seven is actually the one signature that has a positive correlation with kick. Um, coal is uh, correlated with everything, including signature 10. UCS has mostly weak correlations but a very high correlation to signature nine, which we should be able to see above. So kick, signature nine, we can see over here. 
and an anti-correlation to signature 8, and another positive correlation to signature 7. So this concludes our discovery tutorial. We looked at differential analysis. We created a heat map to explore these correlations. We plotted exposures, uh, slicing by different signatures. We inspected our signatures, comparing them to uh, well-characterized signatures. We viewed all of our signatures. And at the very start, we discovered signatures, novel signatures. Thank you, Shruti, for running those videos. Um, we have some really, really good questions here. Um, I, I'm excited. Um, so let's see. Uh, first, first, I'll answer the questions, and then um, I'll just wrap up the, the presentation. So um, let's see. So I have some of the answers to these pulled up. Um, so let's see. So um, I'll start with. Um, uh, let's see, Glenn, if you want to highlight uh, Sonali's, um, Sonali's most recent, um, could you explain the prediction algorithm briefly? Yeah. Uh, could you explain the prediction algorithm briefly? How did you choose the top signatures to visualize on heat map, stack bar plot? Are the results rank ordered or sorted by? Um, uh, is that adjacent p value? I'm not sure. Um, so the, the prediction algorithm is uh, based on the um, posterior from uh, an LDA. So this is a, a custom algorithm that's that's built. Um, we have a uh, paper coming out, uh, hopefully uh, pretty soon, that will describe that in, in a lot of detail. But it's based on the, the latent Dirichlet allocation posterior. Um, in terms of the um, top signatures, um, so when we're when we're sorting by uh, by signature exposure, we're um, we're just sorting by the either proportional or raw uh, counts associated with that signature. So that's not uh, statistically based. That's just just the proportion of counts that map to to the selected signature. Um, let's see, um, Caitlin Harrigan um, has a question. Um, how does LDA de novo extraction compared to NMF methods. Um, so we have some uh, preliminary results that, that aren't, they're not, they're not published. So um, you can decide whether to take my word on this or not, but we've, we found that they have um, um, potentially uh, higher signature stability. Um, they can be, um, you, can, you can get good results without having to run as many independent chains um, so we've had pretty good results with um, LDA de novo extraction compared to, uh, to to NMF, but it's not published yet. Um, hopefully that'll that'll be out soon, and um, you know it'll be more more compelling than than me saying that we like that method. Um, uh, let's see, what should I have next in order? Um, yeah, we've got um, Sonali. Um, hi again for the filtering of counts. What fields are you using from BCF, e.g. reads that support alt allele and tumor sample? So um, there's there's two different things that we're talking about. So um, here I, I actually am going to um, uh, present some um, some live code demo. Um, I'll go against my uh, <laughs> my prior um, <laughs> prior judgment against not doing that. Um, let's see if you could clear the question from the stream. It looks like I can't present. Well, that's up. So let's let's try this. Um, let's see if I can present my our studio. Okay, is that is that visible? Can you see uh, Can you see what's on my screen here? Yep. Okay. Looks like it's there. Okay. Great. So um, so two two answers. So this question about. Um, uh, I'll actually answer both of the other questions, so I'll just read this out um, quickly. Um, 
if I have a list of SMVs from multiple samples in a text file, um, can that be used for Musica, uh, for input to Musica TK? Um, so I'll actually answer both of those together. So um, it's actually um, very, very simple. So this is what a data set looks like. So you can, if you have anything that looks like this, the only thing you need are um, these six columns. You need the chromosome, the genomic start and end, the reference allele, the alt allele, and the sample. Um, so any text file that includes those columns, um, any data frame or matrix you can read in with that, you can import that into, into Musica TK. Um, and when it comes to filtering, um, there's, um, so if you have some filter, uh, filter column, so um, mutect puts on uh, filtering and it has different, different forms of filtering. Um, for now, we just have a flag that just says filter true false. And if, um, if it says pass, then it passes, otherwise it gets filtered. Um, the filtering that I was talking about in the tutorial is actually something different. So that was, uh, that's looking at this line, so subsetting um, Musica by counts. So what we're doing there is we're actually filtering low count samples away. So here, here's what I'm talking about. So if I show you our um, table, um, Oh, I don't know that. So uh, <laughs> this is live. So um, so here's our actual um, table. So each of these is a sample, and there's a number of counts. And if you look at the min number of counts, it's two. Two counts is very very low um, for doing mutational signature analysis. So what we're doing here is we're subsetting music by counts, and we're specifying num counts five. So so here it's very very straightforward. It's just dropping any of the samples with um, fewer than five counts. And so here, now when we look at the min on the subset of data set, now the minimum number of counts is eight. So that's just, that's an optional step, um, but that can improve your, your signal a lot if you're just using, you know, five counts is, seems like kind of, kind of the minimum to get good results more, more is better, obviously. Um, let's see, here did we, <laughs> oh, this is great, I love this many questions. Um, let's see. Um, um, can we get genes contributing to the identified enriched signature? So um, currently we don't have something built in that annotates genes on top of um, a given sample or a given um, signature. Um, that's a good uh, that's a good idea for a um, for a method. If you'd like to add that as a, an issue to the the GitHub, um, we're we're open source, so um, that's a, that, that's a great question for for a feature. Um, can you show off the Musica object a bit? Uh, can you have variant M call similar to G ranges object? Um, are we are we supposed to end at at five forty five? Um, because I would like to show just the acknowledgments and the the links. I don't know if um, um, we can probably go like a couple of minutes over. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. So um, yeah, I would love to show off the music object. So um, um, so um, so here's the the music object. So the music object um, is just three things. So we have the variants, um, we have the count tables, and we have um, sample annotations. Um, so there's there's not a lot going on with with this one. So we have um, so the variants. This is just that that table. We've got our um, the locations of our variants, uh, what the alt and ref are, the sample, um, and we've annotated the uh, the variant type. So we've got insertions and deletions. Um, there's our TCGA. So, um, but there's a lot that can be added onto this. So, for example, you can add on uh, sample annotations. And then you have this mapping between your samples and a tumor type, um, and we saw some some cool things that you can um, can do with that. Um, I'll just quickly answer a, a question that on here that I saw popped up because this is this is a really important question. Um, can we run Musica for single sample? Yes. So this is something that uh, was really important to us. Um, so this is um, this is one thing that made us really excited about about building Musica is that um, you can take a single sample 
um, which we know, you know, someday if mutational signatures kind of starts to make it into clinical use, is going to be really important. You can take a single musica sample. Um, so, um, uh, musica, let's say you have just this one sample. So these are all the same sample. You build a count table for it. And then you can do the, the prediction. So predict exposure. And you just put in your musica. Um, you select um, SBS 96 is just the, the most common uh, table type. Um, and from here, your, your signatures, uh, we actually built in um, all of the available cosmic signatures. So if you want to use um, cosmic version two, if you want to use, um, if you have double base substitutions or assertions and deletions, we have the version three, which has um, uh, whole exome and whole genome. You simply select that and it does the prediction uh, directly for you. So you can predict um, using any of the cosmic signatures without needing to download anything or process anything. If you have your own signatures that you've developed, then you can um, you can input those as well. Um, so um, if you have some prior run, some analysis that you've done, you can use those signatures to predict on for a single sample or for a whole cohort. Um, are we <laughs> are we are that's, we running out of time? Or we? Yeah, we have uh, okay. we have two questions here, but I don't think we have time for them unfortunately. Okay. Well, here, um, but Aaron, are you going to be available during like the networking time for people to reach out with uh, to you with like messages and air meet? or potentially meet you at one of the lounge tables or something? Sure, yeah, that, that would be great. Is, is there time for me just to, to show an acknowledgement slide and a... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we got a minute for that, go for it. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, I'm really excited that there's there's this many questions. I love that people are engaged. That's what happens when you make cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So this cool stuff um, couldn't have happened without um, a lot of help from um, from colleagues and peers. So everybody in the uh, the Campbell Lab at, at BU, uh, my PI Josh, um, Kelly, she, um, people in the our, our group, um, computational biomedicine, um, and also um, first years and master students in mathematics and statistics and bioinformatics. Um, so there's a lot of people that have contributed to this package. And if you'd like to find out more, you can um, check us out at um, campbio slash musica tk. Um, of course, uh, bioconductor, musica tk. And um, check out the uh, camplab.net website as well, and camplab1 on Twitter. Um, you can find all the links for musica tk as well as other software. And um, I should just mention, because someone asked, about links for the tutorial, um, uh, github.com slash campbio slash manuscripts, Musica TK has those tutorial videos along with the markdown. So all of the code, you can run it yourself along with a um, lock file that actually um, gives you the correct versions of all of the packages. Um, and everything is, is run with a seed so you can get the exact same results that were generated for this tutorial. Um, automatically downloads the data, everything, along with knitted HTML, so you can compare to what it's, what it's supposed to look like. Um, so thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Really appreciate your talk.